the hell is this? Is that that Brondo stuff? They're watering crops with a sports drink? Hey, what's up? Just starting to make a vid and the guy shows up. Needs his own chair. Alright, so I just put that uh, Enjora LCG chassis into the Gladiator. It was a little strange. Alright, so we're going to break this down here. If you're going to do it and you're running the brushless system forward facing motor, it's going to get a bit weird. Alright, so let me get a pointer. Tweezers. So this little slot right here, top and bottom, is where you normally mount your ESC holder receiver combo. Oh man, he's going to climb on the chair. Mushroom! Mushroom! Come on! Ugh. Yeah, so it go in here, but it, your motor hits it. You can kind of see that it totally gets in the way right there. No good. No good! So, I was thinking... I'll just pop these guys off here. Bloop! Alright, so I was thinking, do I put it in behind here? But, as you can see, there wouldn't be much room. What I ended up doing was I took it out of its case because you don't need it and then I zip tied it up under that guy right there. So it becomes really low profile once you take it out of its case. Seems to be working pretty good now, get, get my full flex from it, nothing gets in the way, nothing hits the drive shaft which is really sweet. Uh, the ESC from Fury Tech, I just kind of wrapped up a little bit of duct tape here, kind of kept it tight so no loose wires would go anywhere. But here's something I did that was kind of bizarre, so I'll take the battery out of there. So you have these two plates extra, well one plate extra, that's your normal battery mounting plate right here, right? And then there, you, you have this extra plate left over from not putting it up here. So I threw it into this slot right there, as you can see. There. Get the reflection on there. This guy right here. So it's an angled slot. I was like, oh, this will work perfect. And then I realized really quickly that if I set anything on there, it's going to hit this drive shaft. So luckily I had this old piece of Lego. And I just super glued it, as you can see, a little bit of glue around there and it kind of spaces perfectly around that and then it gives me enough room where I can put something here and it won't hit the drive shaft now so when I put the battery in it just kind of presses this way and it keeps everything nice and tight which is awesome this is that Injora servo that I decided to put in I, I would have liked to have gone with more of these guys because these are really nice. I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty darn sweet servos. And I'm finding this to be equally as good, but for a quarter of the price. Half the price, I guess. It's only about one of them, about two of these. Yeah, anyway, we won't talk about that anymore. But this thing, oh man. So I had the Emacs in here before, and it it's an Emacs, right? They're cheap, they don't give you full. There's, you, you don't get your full turn. You can see the turn radius on this thing now. It's, it's crazy. I don't think it's as good as this guy. Like, this guy gets some crazy turn radius. Turning angle. Like that, that's, that's nuts. But this is dope. This is totally good. And the power this thing has now is crazy. Like, I, I did some climbing yesterday with it. And what it can go up now because of this angle and the ability to like work itself oh it's a good little servo like as long as you're running an aftermarket ESC this thing isn't gonna stutter or anything and I so you can see this thing has it's gone through some shit there goes the kit oh he's yep, yep just doing all the stuff yep why wouldn't you come this way Yep, totally. That's cool. Get on the table. Wicked, buddy. 
but uh, I accidentally ripped out, like literally ripped out, I think the plug. No, uh, what happened to it? Yeah, no, I ripped out the, the Bluetooth, so I can't even plug it in, like it came off the motherboard. <laughs> like, <laughs> some bad stuff happened. So it's basically stuck on the lowest voltage for its BC right now, so I can't even attempt to rehook it up or anything like that and this little servo is kicking butt I don't feel the need to push it to 8.5 volts to get that insane back and forth I just no it's a crawler it's not a freaking speed demon and uh, yeah this thing has been working crazy there's a uh, there's one climb that just blew me away I didn't think it was going to be able to do it but just the geometry of these monster freaking tires it pulled itself up and I was just laughing I was like what the shit all right so you can see this guy up here when oh yeah another thing I have this ramp crab adjustable brass servo holder does not work with this servo and portal from Triel. You can turn one way, but this arm right here, it ends up hitting this side here. So you can turn left all the way, no problem, but then you go to turn right and it smashes that. So you only get about half to maybe a third of your turning to the right. Like when these little, you can see it's adjustable, right? So I think it was two holes over from where it is right now. It held the Emacs just fine without any turning issues. But I've, I've lost, I believe, almost 50 grams in total. So I think this thing weighs like 12 grams. This is a 13, 14 gram. The chassis was heavier than I thought, so this rig is just at 700 grams now instead of 740. So it's pretty crazy. It's it's dropped a little bit of weight, and I think I need to figure out how to add more to the front because just this little bit up front seemed to make it climb better, keep its front end down. So I got to figure out how to do that, and then I'm going to show you this. Uh, Oh yeah, so check this out too. This little weight. You want to throw a weight if you if you have these as forward as you can. So it looks like it's gonna hit. And it's like just like just missing. Like look at that. So I can still have that weight. It's overhanging the front servo, so it's literally as far as I can put it in the vehicle. And that's just a little bit extra up front, which I think is awesome. So the thing looks the same, it's just dropped its interior guts a little bit. As you can see, it's an angled chassis now, instead of, like that guy right there, which is just flat. So this is what I had to do to it to get that uh, motor to sit in there properly. Very basic, you know, normal chassis. This thing seems to be pretty decent. Like, So there's all of your mounting holes for your shocks. I don't suggest using any of those. Let's see if I can get that angle right so you can see the holes, the reflection, yeah, right there. That's where Injora thinks you should mount your shocks. I chose this one with the metal bar that runs through to give the chassis support and same with the rear. It actually ended up matching where I had it before. So the rear there where the battery tray would actually mount up and in the front where the ESC holder would mount up. That seems to be the perfect angle for this and it actually matched perfectly. So I'm glad I didn't have to drill holes in this. So now let's uh, let's check out that one climb that this thing's able to do now. It's crazy. Oh yeah, before I do that, yeah, he's got to get on the table. Yeah, get right in my face. What's up? So before I show that, 
Come on, man. Does this every time. Keep going. This chassis now is angled, which makes the motor point kind of down. But this is totally sweet because of it. The way it mounted before, I just glued the Lego guys to the top of the Fury Tech transmission. And with that little bit of an angle now, it clears the stuff under there now. It didn't used to do that. It used to get wedged up by the battery, so that you, you had to get your battery in there. And now because of that, I have two other guys that hook up to the back here. It's kind of like a, a piece that fits in on either side of this, and then you get your rear passengers. And because of that now, it fits perfectly. It's freaking sweet. This thing turned out better than I thought. I was kind of, I was kind of sketchy, like sketched out. Do I get this? But uh, it ended up working pretty darn freaking sweet. So yeah, let's check out that climb. All right, here we are. Let's see if we got it. Yeah, we got power. So you can see that servo is it's freaking great, like straight up. All right, so this is the angle we're sitting at right now. So from the perspective of it, it's going up that right there. So it kind of plateaus right here, and it's got that climb up. So it's it's a pretty freaking gnarly climb. So let's see where I can set this thing where it gets a good angle for you. Okay, this is the first attempt. She also kind of give you a side view of it going up this. So it's it's pretty good right here. And then it gets gnarly. I don't think the C10 could make it past this right here. Like it's it's getting pretty steep. The body's kicking back even though it's strapped to keep that down. But then I have to start turning hard left into that. So let's set that back there. Alright. I don't know if I'll get it on the first try, but... Oh, maybe. Wonder how that's looking on camera right there. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> what, what the hell? Like the oh, it's crazy. This servo is so decent. I very much recommend them. When I, when I saw it pull that off, I was like, what the? That climb is just, it's freaking crazy. Let's try it one more time here. Maybe I'll change the angle up. A little different angle. Get that tire to hook. Look at that. <laughs> it's such a sick line. Whoop. As you can see, it, it needs to be a specific line. It's not just gonna climb up, it, it has to hook its tire up and over this, which is just freaking great. There he goes. And this servo, like, so much power to it. Freaking crazy. I dig it. Later. <laughs> and tomorrow night looks even more better. Word is that Beef Supreme himself might come out of retirement. <laughs>